Hey everybody, Mark from Northeast Bass Fishing. How you doing? Well, we finally reached, you can kind of see it there, the last rack uh, of all the racks here. And you guys have seen all those and you can see, well, doing these videos has helped me get a lot of that stuff organized. But that's the bottom rack there, which you'll see today is top water stuff, um, spinner baits, some chatter baits, and blade baits. And that's pretty much it for the for what's on the rack, I guess. After that, I could just kind of show you what's in these containers here, and I've got, you know, a bunch of them over there, uh, so I can kind of go through those, I suppose. But uh, let me just show you um, what's what's here as far as the top orders and the blade baits and everything go. Uh, this box here is my buzz bait box, some various kinds uh, of buzz baits, some single buzzers, uh, some with black blades, some with pink, which you'd be surprised how effective can be right situation i prefer like this type of buzz bait uh, i prefer this like the straight king double buzzer it's always been i can remember back in the day throwing the blue fox double buzzer and <clears throat> i always seem to do better with the uh, with a double buzzer if i'm going to put a buzz bait on usually this is the first one i'll go with um if i'm fishing maybe at night just trying to do something a little different i may try one of these single bladed ones but i haven't thrown a single bladed one in quite a while but that's the the blade baits there some whites blacks see the pink one some with the black and chartreuse a few different kinds there but that's the buzz bait section let's see these two here frogs pop bars spooks jitterbugs somewhat organized i think at this point of the year i don't really for me personally it hasn't been a great top water uh season not bad but not great um a fish here and there more probably frog fish than pop bar fish or or you know a pencil bait pencil popper bait or regular you know spook type bait probably have done better with just frogging occasionally here at the end towards the end of the summer i think has been a little better but um as you can see this box has some different poppers some rip baits here, some prop baits. Everything's kind of looks like it might be a little disorganized. Yeah, some old poppers here. It's a chug bug, I think, or spit and pop. I forget what they call that one. I forget who makes this. A man's. I don't remember. It's probably all rubbed off. You can't see it anyway. And some different, uh, different spook type baits. These old striking, a little build dance there some different types some pencil poppers which i think look cool and uh, in the water but i haven't really done great with them but i haven't thrown them as much as i've thrown the other stuff either this old live target popper i use always loved i wish they still made it if they do i don't know where they are but i always did very well with these regular poppers different kinds super pop r different poppers here and then just a bunch of frogs some popping frogs regular frogs there is i know that spro is going to is is going to have on tackle warehouse towards the end of the year some uh, replacement you know i guess you'll call them i guess you'll call them legs <laughs> for these frogs because i have a bunch where they're like stuck together and they're just worn out and ripped off and i would definitely i definitely want to go through this winter and and you know kind of clean up the frog section here and fix a lot of the older ones where the these get all stuck together and when you pull them out they tear off and they're just in bad shape they're, they're old and just they they almost melt together after a while but you can see that get a good view of all the different poppers and frogs and types of things in there i like to throw a live target frog but i have a lot of different brands in here i also like the spro frog very much river to sea has a good fr i mean you know just you know, Frogzilla. <laughs> is that what that is? I'm not even sure. But there's a, a lot of different kinds in here. And sometimes that popper is better. This might be a Riot Baits one. I forget who made that one. But oh, there's a bunch of different kinds in here. Really, whichever one you have faith in is is the best one. But I like that. I've never really found a frog I didn't like. It all depends on if you're getting a good hookup or not. Uh, let's see. This top water box just says top water bait, so <laughs> pretty pretty basic. This is Whopper Ploppers. Looks like more frogs. Bunch of Whopper Ploppers in there. Bigger spooks. The 
Uzuris. These are nice ones. They're a little kind of a, a medium size one, I'd say. But we, they're a good one. That one's a big. I don't even know who makes that one. Ouch. Those hooks are sharp. River to Sea Bubble Walker. Okay. Oh, man, those hooks are sharp. That's a big one. I don't remember even where I got that. Maybe somebody got me that for Christmas. But just some different frog and topwater type baits. I haven't really done as well this year on the uh, the Whopper Plopper. Maybe they're starting to get used to that sound and they're kind of laying off it. Probably the buzz bait will probably be better. Well, that's it for the topwater boxes. And I, I've gotten these new ones from... Uh, Big Bass Dreams, Oliver and Riley. These, if you guys haven't seen this, you can check it out online. I had the the 20 gram one, the Down Under, uh, tied on. And I've tried this with heavy mono. And I've tried it with a braid. And I definitely like the braid better. Unfortunately, the topwater bite has been lousy around here. So it's hard for me to judge because I can't get them on anything. But the action of this bait is just so different. Kind of popper. Kind of like a spook action, but it dives down it gives you like an underwater that right subsurface action you just you just have to throw it and you never know which way it's going to pop up so it's very cool and, and as you guys can see and i know i've shown some video of these before these paint jobs are absolutely <laughs> awesome i know when i at camp this summer when i saw them i knew i would have to get some of these but if you haven't go check out the big bass dreams uh, site check these out i have the just to start I have the 20 gram, and I haven't thrown the bigger one here, the 30. Now, they, I think they even make a 40 to 50. I don't remember exactly all the different sizes, but I haven't thrown this real big one yet. But when the top water bite time comes, and if we get one here as this, this water cools down and maybe they'll start hitting, on, hitting some top waters, I'm definitely going to... Every time I go out, I tie this on and throw it around. And I've been just trying some different rods, some different lines, but definitely I like the braid better. Too much stretch with the, with the heavy 20-pound mono for this bait. Um, but I definitely want to, um, I, I will have this tied on the rest of the season and, uh, love to get some footage of some, some nice ones on there because it is such a cool action. And as you guys can see, the, those paint jobs are just great. But if you haven't checked them out, go to these, uh, Big Bass Dreams and check out these. That's the down under 20 gram and that's the 30 there. See the packaging. I know I've shown you these guys before, but I'll show it to you quick since I'm doing top order here. All right, now the rest of this stuff is spinner baits, chatter baits. This is my main chatter bait box. I think I have some chatter baits, some older ones that are in. A, I don't even have them in a box. I think I have them in a drawer that I haven't thrown as much. This is my main chatter bait box. It has a little bit of everything. It has some of these these hair ones, but I think Picasso makes these. Some homemade ones from some companies. A lot of jackhammers, but. The last couple years, I've really fallen in love with the chatterbait. It just, when I first started throwing it, it seemed like I'd get bites, but they would get off. They would, I would get bites, but they would get off. Now, I don't know if I've just gotten better at throwing it or the, the chatterbait itself has a better hook or whatever the reason, but I have so much more confidence in this. And a lot of my lakes around here that are shallow and weedy, this bait just sets up perfect for it. And uh, it's just a great alternative to a spinnerbait. It's a great way to cover water. You know, lots of bites, big bites. So whatever chatterbait brand you like, if you want to get the high-end jackhammers, you know, I, I understand it because they're great, but I've caught them on all these. Um, any any company that I've, you know, some of the ones on Instagram that I've gotten them, gotten ones from, catching them on that. So it's just a great bait. It's It just works. And uh, I think any brand you choose or that you like, you know, go with it and, and you'll catch them. But... That's the chatterbait box right there, which it looks a little ragged. And I know I actually have some newer chatterbaits that I've shown you on videos that I just have in a bag. I haven't put them in here yet. So, But when winter gets here, all this stuff will get cleaned up and, and organized and hook sharpened and all that. That's the chatterbait box. The rest of these, I believe, are just spinnerbaits. So let me do, I'll do the bigger spinnerbait boxes first. Strike King 38 Special. This is, I believe, discontinued. I haven't been able to find it in the last couple years. As you can see, I like the 38 Special. These hammered blades have always worked great for me. This is one spinnerbait I usually always have tied on. Um, I prefer the silver blades, but when I have one of these, I will replace O-rings on it, sharpen hooks, do everything I can to keep 
it working until it finally the the wire snaps from catching fish but these these colored blades these white ones in dirty water these these chartreuse they're great they work great the, the black one has its uses the red one has its use it's a great spinnerbait i wish strike king still made it i know there's other companies that make spinnerbaits with these hammered blades and when i see them i usually buy them but I, I don't know what it is with that 38 special i always did great with it so i have a lot i don't know if it'll last me forever because i do have some in bags still but uh, i always try to take care of them and and, you know, if they any, gets any rust on them, I clean them up. But uh, that's a great spinnerbait. I, w I wish Strike King still made it. They make 100 spinnerbaits. I wish they still made that one. Uh, I guess I'll do these big boxes first. Uh, this, I'm going to assume, is just various spinnerbaits here. Take a look. Let me open it up. And I'm sure there's a whole bunch of different... These these spinnerbait boxes, I forget who made these. Is that plain? Plano Elite, yeah. These spinnerbait boxes are nice because you because you you lock your spinnerbait in there and it's not. You put it in and then just slide it through there and then pop it down. It's, it really holds in there nice. And these are just various companies spinnerbaits that I have. You know, you see how that goes in there, and then you just pop this down. If I can do it while filming, boom, and then your spinnerbait is nice and tight. These are different brands i would never remember all them <laughs> but uh, as you can see i love throwing spinner baits i still do to me it doesn't seem maybe it's as popular as it used to be i can't imagine why because it still works great uh, especially in the fall time of the year here coming up i'll have a spinner bait tied on i'll have a chatter bait tied on probably an underspin so that flash and the shine and everything especially as the water's a little dingy the the bait is small at the spinner bait really shines so this is just different companies I, I could, wouldn't even be able to remember all the different ones that are in here. It's probably some Strike Kings mixed in. But you guys can get a good look there. If you see something here and you go, hey, that, I'd like to see that one closer. If you, while you're watching the video, just let me know. Just let me know. Definitely going to do an underspin video. We've had requests for that. So definitely working on that soon. Uh, another one of my favorite spinner baits that I'm not sure... If these are still, I think they were their website is still active. Um, these bumper stuffer spinner baits, I used, I, I would, I this was probably my favorite along with the um, the thirty eight special, the reservoirs where I lived in Jersey. These were killer, especially like that that black. Maybe some of these you can see I have had to replace the skirts, but just this these this one. Uh, actually, I must have put that on. So this must have had I, I must have added one of those Strike King <laughs> blades on there, but um, usually both of their blades are like these reflective material. Let me take another one out for you. This is one here. You can see these blades uh, really flash great. You guys can see that in the light. Um, this is a great spinner bait. I I I'd, I'd have to look and see if they are still being made. I don't know. I'd like to even get some more. Uh, and some some new ones with some new skirts and all that stuff. So I may do some research this winter and see what I can find and maybe grab a few. I haven't thrown them as much this year, but quite frankly, I haven't thrown a spinnerbait as much. Oh, is that wrong? Because um, I've been throwing the chatterbait more, but I always have these tied on. These are uh, if it's not a thirty-eight special, it'll probably be one of these guys. Lots of different cool colors. I'll have to check their website and see if they're still active. Because if they are, I'd love to... Oh, see, I know it has that... that in the way. There we go. has that plastic keeper on there. But these are all great colors. Check out Bumper Stump. I, I, if I can find a link to it, or if you guys just want to see a video just on these, I can do it. If you see any special brand that you want to see a, a, a video on, I can do that. And take some more time instead of just showing you the... Uh, I guess there's a couple other things. This is my spy bait box. I have had moderate success with a spy bait, but I also have not thrown it that much. There are some clear water lakes around me where I think this will shine. And I think this fall, when I'm fishing, I'm going to throw it more. Because I think the lakes, by, some of the lakes by me are going to set up you know, really well for this. And 
I just have to I just have to put some more time in on the spy bait. It looks so cool in the water, and I can I can see how it'll work. I've seen so many cool videos of it being a great way to catch them in the in that clear water when they're suspended. I just haven't I haven't personally put the time in uh, with the spy bait, but it's a cool idea. I just I think I probably use too heavy a line, even though the bigger ones now you can use you know eight or eight pound line. But you know when I see videos and guys are using two pound line or whatever it is four pound, I'm like whoa I don't even own four pound line. <laughs> But uh, some of these are really cool. A lot of these are probably dual realis. Yeah, this is pretty much, pretty much the best one I think is the dual realis. Even though you know there's everybody's making one now and they're all nice. I don't think these are. I think these might be Berkeley ones. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on that. That matte black is actually pretty cool. Yeah, Berkeley. Berkeley spy baits. I got a few of those. So it's something I need to uh, to try more. And to see if I can get get some faith in it, get some confidence in it. When those bass, this would be probably the perfect time of year when a lot of those bass on, on the deeper clear water lakes by me are suspended. This would probably be a good way to, to try to catch some and just see if I can get some confidence in it. But, you know, it's like anything else. You just got to throw it more. I can't go out and throw it for 10 minutes and say, yeah, this, this ain't working and try something else. Um, I do also have my blade baits over here. I know I've shown you guys. I've done blade bait videos before. I'll show you the box quick. Different blade baits. Uh, one of my favorites, the Binsky. You guys know Fish Sense Lures Binsky is one of my favorites. You can see I have a lot of those. I love this. I've really done well lately the last couple of years with this this one here. This black and blue one has really been good for me. Um, just your regular steel, you know, your steel shads. Um, I don't remember exactly. This might be Demiki's, a Demiki vault. I don't remember. Uh, River, to, uh, the Keyburn one. I think is that River to Sea. I don't remember. This actually might be the vault here. I'm not sure who made that one. Some different brands. These are all Fish Sense um, Demi or, uh, Binsky's up here. Um, some Vibratos. Uh, just regular Silver Buddies, which really is probably the <laughs> easiest way to go. I think these are Bass Pro ones here. So I have just a few different... I have another box with older ones that are pretty beat up, but this is my main... You know, when I'm up on Champlain, this box will be with me. Or when I'm in... When it's blade bait season here in the fall, when it's cold out, this will be in the boat and might even be the first thing I start throwing, you know, when I know this fish are, you know, kind of sitting on the bottom. But love for... Blade bait fishing is fun. It is fun. Especially when they're biting it. <laughs> Especially when they're biting it. Um, <clears throat> I'll show you this quick, even though this is something I really haven't done. Alabama Bama rigs, Evolution spinner baits. I don't know if Evolution is still going on, but they made a really cool. If I can find one here, I know everything's kind of mixed up in this box. They have a it's almost like a finesse. I can show you this. I don't know if Evolution is still around. I have to look. They 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 made these like almost finesse Alabama rig type uh, spinner baits with the double which were really cool. But, you know, COVID came. I don't know if they still continued to make uh, make baits. Um, but they're, they look really cool in the water. Uh, I know the Alabama rig in my state, I don't think it's, I don't think in New Hampshire it's even legal. So I haven't, I can't remember the last time I actually threw an A-rig. <laughs> you can see it's kind of a mess in here. Some of those, some of these, you know, multi-arm spinner baits, which are pretty cool. Along with some, Alabama rigs that are, I mean, that one obviously needs a, a new skirt, but you can see the idea. That's a pretty cool idea. You know, and you just need to clean those, clean those blades up a little. So it's almost like, is it a finesse Alabama rig? I guess you could call it that. Even though there's no, you know, swim baits on here, it's just blades instead. But it's a cool idea. It does have its place. Um, like I said, these are still in the pack because really, I don't, I don't think they're legal in in uh, New Hampshire, which wouldn't surprise me because nothing is. <laughs> but I don't do that a lot. It does have its time and place. It is fun. Whenever I throw an Alabama rig in Jersey, all I did was catch the bottom. Um, the rest of these are spinnerbait boxes. Oh, now, hopefully I've got them marked fairly well so I can at least give you an idea of what they are. These are all different Strike King spinnerbaits. Different models. Might be some 38 specials in there. I don't think so. I mean, well, that looks like a 38 special. That's a 38 special right there. So is that. Must not have room in that other box. But just to show you the old 38 special, this is the, th the chartreuse one. 
with those chartreuse blades. And you might think, ah, oh, those blades are not going to catch. You throw this in dirty, murky water, <laughs> uh, you will get some bites. You will get some bites when the regular blades are not producing. I, I, I have a lot of comf a lot of confidence in, in uh, painted blades in dirty water. There's too many times when I've switched to painted blades, whether they be white or chartreuse. Most of the time it's white that I'll switch to. Um, but there's many times when I'm throwing a regular spinner bait, it is not producing. You switch to those pink, those colored blades on that in that dirty, murky water, and uh, and it's it's like it's like all of a sudden there's fish there. So it, it does have its time and place. So don't sleep on those painted blades uh, for spinner baits. Um, Sob. I don't know if the Sob company still exists. I know Fleck. I think Fleck was gone a long time ago. And these are just some you know various brands that I probably picked up over the years, you know, because I like the colors, you know, I like the single blade, I like the painted blades for dirty water. Um, the Flex spinnerbait, especially here in New England, used to be very popular. Um, I don't think the company still exists. <clears throat> but, um, you know, these, these smallmouth uh, spinnerbaits they made were very popular back in the day. I don't know, like I said, if they're still around. But I have, I used to get these at Northern Bass Supply, which I miss greatly. Um, but there they are. I mean, that's the old Flex spinner baits. There was a company online, Sob Spinner Baits, that made a lot of cool spinner baits. You know, hand tied, different types of blade combinations, painted, unpainted. That makes some really used to make some really nice spinner baits. Someone I think bought them out, so I think they do exist. I don't know if they're, you know, if they're still making the same exact ones. When I bought these, these are older ones, so. Of course, now with the trailer hook on there, and it's, everything's getting messed up, but I'll fix it later. But you guys uh, got a good look there. That's uh, SOB and Fleck. As I said, I don't know if you can still get those. Um, the Lucky Strike Trickster. The Rick Clun Spinnerbait. This is a, uh, got these different types of blades. Um, but I do very well with them. Um, it's a great night spinner bait. These give off a lot of vibration, especially that three quarter ounce one. And um, every now and then, um, if I'm in a night tournament, I throw this and I do very well with it. Um, they got some cool colors. I think a half ounce and three, I don't know if they do a three eighths. I know they're a half ounce and a three, uh, three quarters, but, but every now and then, if I see them on sale, I'll pick them up and stock up because I do like to throw it. I do like to throw it. It's a good spinner bait. The Lucky Strike Trickster. Check them out if you want to try something with some different type of blades. Uh, Terminator spinner baits, hog sticker. It's just some different various brands. It's a nice one. I don't think that's a hog sticker. Uh, let's see. That's a hog sticker. I don't know if hog sticker still exists. I probably got them back in the day because I like those hammer blades, and I figured I'd try out a different company's brand. The old Terminators. I remember when the Terminators first came out. They did very well with them. The only problem is the blades would fall off. <laughs> so I don't know if that was... You can tell these blades have been painted and repainted. I don't know how many times. Lots of different styles in here. That's definitely a hog sticker. Which I think was a company that was... I used to see it in an outdoor show somewhere. I don't remember. But those are old. Whether they still make hog sticker spinner baits, I'm not sure. Oh, let's see. Big Mouth Lures and War Eagle. War Eagle is a very good spinner bait. I like them a lot. I was actually looking at some online the other day. I was thinking of getting some new spinner baits, but I never got them. But I assume this is that other one. What I say that was? Big Mouth Lures. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember if that's a new company, an old company. I don't remember who made that one with that. Was that uh, Mega Strike that made that with that wig, that joint in there? I don't remember. I mean, it's easy to tell a War Eagle. But I've done very well with the War Eagle spinnerbait is great. Um, for you guys who like spinnerbaits, I'm sure a lot of you like War Eagles. It's a great spinnerbait. Done very well with it. Uh, these two boxes 
are both different nighttime spinner baits. And as you can see, black, black and red, big thumper blades, different brands, Strike Kings, various other kinds that I would never remember in a hundred years. But, you know, for you guys who like night fishing, which I do not, um, this is it. These are some, it looks like some Strike Kings there. I think these are all like that Strike King. So any, any time you're fishing at night, a spinnerbait is always good. The black works great. Does it have to be a black spinnerbait at night? Some people swear by it. I've caught fish on both. You know, black ones, double willows, big thumper blades like these. Does it be a black blade, a silver blade? It's all really what you have faith in. But I've, when I was in my old bass club, we used to fish a lot of night tournaments, or at least one a year, sometimes two. And we throw these around and do well, do well. I can't say I did better with the black ones than I did with my regular, you know, chartreuse and white ones, but or chatterbait. It all depends on what you have faith in at night. Um, but that's a very popular way to throw to um, fish at night. All right, some Stanley spinner baits, Lead Buster Revenge. I don't even remember what a revenge spinner bait looks like. Let's see if I can remember by looking at it. Oh, the, oh, okay. These are also big, heavy. These revenge ones are big and heavy. I think um, the tactical bassing guys told me about these to try them at night. And they're pretty good with them. That's pretty good with them. They're nice spinner baits, well made, heavy, a lot of thump. You can chuck them a mile. Uh, Stanley but these are definitely the revenge ones here I don't know what was that other brand oh ledge busters oh, I don't see any of those big ledge buster bullets oh there they go now speaking about night tournaments <laughs> or you know deep uh, the craze I don't know how many years ago when the ledge buster became a thing, when guys were working, you know, deep water structure with big, heavy spinner baits, and uh, these ledge busters are good. I don't know if they still make a ledge buster. I have a few in here. I haven't thrown. I can't remember the last time I threw one, but some were double. Some of these are. I mean, these are big, heavy spinner baits for throwing, you know, on big, you know, on deep water structure. So I think there's some ledge busters here. Looks like there's a little bit of everything. And there's these revenge, which are nice. It's a nice spinner bait, a lot of thump. But I think the uh, tactical bassing guys turned me on to these a couple years ago and I tried them. They're pretty good. Pretty good. And the last but not least, what do we got here? Strike more strike kings. Strike King has a ton of spinner baits, and they make a good spinner bait. I remember when this one I first got this this pro model one these did do well with that color that gold was always good but these are all just different strike kings with different uh, different heads different blades that doesn't look like a strike king that is definitely not a strike king i doubt i've never seen a strike king head look like that but you know they're old pro models spinner bait still going strong and you know you guys will notice if you have spinner baits that are old um, the strap on the, uh, the skirt, that'll start to stretch out. You might throw the spinnerbait five times, you'll pull back in, the skirt's gone. It just means your strap broke, so I always try to keep an eye on them. If I find they're getting too loose, like this one here is getting there. If I was going to throw this spinnerbait in particular, I probably would change that. When they get dark like that, they're usually getting ready to tear. Or you could just take some mon or some uh, floral or braid and just tie it around there. If you want to hold on to it, keep it intact just for the fishing day before you can change it. But uh, that's it. Uh, like in the winter time, what I'll do is I'll go through my spinner baits and just check my hooks and if they're the ones that have been in the boat, make sure anything isn't rusty and needs to be sharpened. And if there's any skirts that are in bad shape, I'll just uh, you know replace the skirt. But that's it, everybody. Um, you saw all my spinner baits, different kinds that I've got here. Um, if you saw a particular brand you'd like me to talk about, let me know. I could do an individual video just on that. Uh, there's the Alabama rig box, spy bait box with blade baits, and all the top water stuff right there. 
and uh, that's the blade baits right there actually so that's it so i hope you guys enjoyed it um did it in less than half an hour well 30 minutes right there so that's for that spot right there so i guess uh you guys have pretty much seen it all you've seen everything on all these racks um I'll do the, I guess the, the next one I'll do probably, I'll just go through the boxes quick and show you guys kind of like all the different stuff that's in there just stored and not hanging up or anything. I mean, I could probably go hang it all up, but then I'd have to buy more, <laughs> more, more pegs to hang things up. So they're good in there, uh, but that's it. So as I said, if there's any particular, um, you know, brand of spinner bait that you'd like more info on, or if they're still available and you, and you can't find them, I can maybe search around and see what I can find. I'm not sure if all these are still uh, produced, but uh, if they are, I'll let you know. So that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Uh, the support's been great, and I appreciate it. So I will see you guys soon on YouTube. Mark out.